this, but the positive emotional attractor in the brain is triggered whenever we're talking to a person about their vision, their hopes, their dreams, their values, their aspirations, what's excited for them, experimentation, and those pieces. That's triggering parts of their mind, which is pretty fascinating. The other side of that, and I want to be sure that we're not saying positive means good and negative means bad. These are just what the labels are. But I'll, I'll finish this slide first. The positive emotional attractor, positive vision of the future, people tend to respond pleasantly to this. So if I'm coaching and I'm asking the coachee, hey, what are you excited about this week? What are you doing for fun? How many people noticed that I asked many of you that when you came in? Yep. I'm messing with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The other really fun thing is that at Case Western Reserve University, they've been doing studies where they've been counseling and coaching students using the positive emotional attractor approach, which is also known as compassion coaching and testing the results with a functional MRI. So the fMRI is when they put all the sticky things on the head and they can see the brain waves, synapses. Those of you in biotech or in probably know about this more than I do. But it's been fascinating, the results they're finding from this part of coaching. The negative emotional attractor is the other side. If we can trigger the NEA or the negative emotional tractor, whenever we talk about the organization's goals, we talk about tasks, we talk about problems, we talk about issues, we're triggering the negative emotional attractor. What that does almost instantly, if you're coaching someone, is that it prompts defensiveness. It prompts defensiveness. So again, it arouses a stress response in the body, but it's helpful, right? The building's on fire, we need to solve problems, we need to make decisions. So because it's called a negative attractor, doesn't mean it's bad. It's not bad, it's just a different part in the mind that's triggered. So, but what happens biologically is the person's hormones get activated, stuff happens with their blood pressure, it's pretty fascinating when you look at all these things that are happening in a person's mind and in their body, just by focusing our questions differently. I have a video clip I'm gonna show you in a little while where Dr. Richard Voyatsis, um, for those of you who have read Resonant Leadership, he's written that book, he's written many books with Lenny McKee, talks about those findings. So stay on the edge of your seat. That will be coming up soon. Yes, do you think this is different than fight or flight response? It is different from fight or flight response because this is what is happening in the mind versus what the person is actually doing. Where fight or flight is a response to how people are feeling. And again, I'm not a psychologist by any means, but that is the action or the behavior where this is what's happening in the mind. Yeah, great question, great question. So, when the person is coached in a way that's called correctional coaching versus compassionate coaching, where it's focused on the organization's goals, that doesn't show the parts of the brain being triggered.